All right, so today we're talking about colonial regions, probably the thing that we've talked about the most. So I kind of wonder what else can I say about it, but <laughs> believe it or not, I found something else. All right, one thing, at least one thing that I know that you need to know that we haven't talked about yet, and one thing that I just think you might be interested to know. Okay, so colonial regions, you should be able to answer this question. Why were the Southern colonies, Middle colonies, and New England colonies different? Most importantly, their economies, how they made money. Why were they different? The answer, I'm not going to give you much time because it's, this should be a review, is geography, all right, the way the land is set up. So if you're not by water, you can't make money fishing. If you have bad soil that can't grow crops, then you're not going to make money farming, okay? So the way the land is and the weather is is going to determine how you make your money, what economic activities you use to make money, all right? So in New England, the thing that New England states had in common is that they all had a similar land and similar climate okay weather so new england looks pretty and it is but the problem is the winters are like this okay and not many crops can live through that all winter all right it's not good also the soil's bad it's not good for farming so instead people fished and built ships to make money okay now you might be thinking fishing shipping i don't know how do you just pull up even though you're on the coast how do you just pull up a ship and load and unload goods well it didn't look like this it looked more like this okay they were harbors. A harbor is a protected place on the coast where ships can pull in and have protection from waves. Okay, so protected place on the coast where ships have protection to load and unload goods. All right, harbors. Middle colonies. Now they were involved in farming and shipping, so their land, their weather was, their weather was better for farming, and the land soil was better for farming. Also, they also had harbors, okay? So this is New York Harbor, here's Manhattan, here's Brooklyn. And so this is also a protected area. You see it has land on both sides, a protected area where ships can come in to load and unload goods. New York is a crazy important harbor, okay? Southern colonies, all right? Because of their weather, because of their soil, they were intensely into agriculture, all right? It was farming. Here they're farming cotton, here they're farming sugar, it's cash, crops, agriculture, all right? They're growing crops for money, okay? Now, you notice that it takes a lot of people to do all this work, and that's why slavery was so important, all right? Slavery is how the people got the work done to make their money in the southern colonies, okay? So it's crazy important to the southern colonies, and the most slaves are going to be found in the south. Now, slaves weren't the only type of worker. You also had indentured servants, and so... So indentured servants are when people work for a certain amount of years in exchange for a trip to the New World, okay? So say you want to go to the New World, but you're too poor to make the trip over there. It's all the way across the ocean. So you find a rich person and you say, I'll work for you for like seven years if you pay my trip across the ocean. And many of them did, okay? The problem is, is that an indentured servant only worked for seven years. So eventually they could become free, not like a slave who was a slave for life. They could actually become free. And so then they could eventually get their own land and start competing for the business of the plantation owners and things like that. So eventually you see them kind of going away from indentured servants and more towards slaves because the slaves never become free. The slaves are never going to be a threat to your business. Okay. Now there's another difference that you need to know between indentured servants and slaves. Okay. So slaves are workers for life, indentured servants for a little while. One of the other differences, slaves were almost always African-American in the colonies, whereas indentured servants would oftentimes be white, okay? They could also be black or African-American, but oftentimes they were white, all right? Lots of women were also indentured servants, okay? Indentured servants. So quick review. New England colonies made money fishing and shipping because they couldn't really farm. Middle colonies made money shipping and farming. Southern colonies made money by growing cash crops, all right? So you see there's almost a progression. The farther south you go, the better it is for farming. So on poor soil, bad weather, no farming. Middle colonies, a lot of farming and grains and also some shipping. Southern colonies, it's intense agriculture, cash crops, okay? Very good for farming. Sometimes you could have like two or three growing seasons in one year because it stayed warm so long and you could grow that many crops, okay? There's one more thing I want to talk about. This isn't something you have to know, but some of you ex have expressed interest in learning more about African American history. And I want to relate that to colonial history, all right, in the 13 colonies. So you learn a lot about how Africans are working together, or working together, how Africans are working as slaves in the colonies. 
But you probably wonder, did they just sit down and take this? I mean, are they just really going to be captured as, and work to work as slaves and not fight back and just say, okay? Well, there are famous examples. One is Nat Turner's Rebellion, where you actually have the slaves get together and turn against their slave owners. Okay? Now, remember, the slaves don't have a lot of power. The only thing they can do is work together, and they have their numbers to support them. All right? But a very important event, Nat Turner's Rebellion, after this happens, a lot of the southern plantation was cracked down on their rules with slaves. They're not allowed to carry weapons or anything like that in case this were to happen again. All right? So, one more thing I want you to know about slave rebellions. One more thing is also for a review. These different colonies made different things, so they had to depend on each other for different goods. Okay, one very important point and vocabulary word I want you to learn for this is interdependence, when they depend on each other for their different goods. So the Southern colonies provided cash crops for New England, and New England could ship the cash crops to England for the southern colonies, so they both depended on each other for the things that they didn't have in their regions. Okay? Very important. So in the new vocabulary words you learned today, interdependence and indentured servants. Okay, those are going to show up on your flashcards today. All right. Have a great weekend. If you have any questions, try and stop me in the hall if it's an appropriate time. Good luck.